Hi, I'm welcome to each one of you. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar. We will be doing a webinar on technical analysis and uh, we will be going through the basics as well as a little more advanced form of uh, using Fibonacci. I hope most of you who have joined uh, are already familiar with the market. If you're very, very new uh, to trading or investing or reading technical analysis, do not worry, I will try and uh, uh, explain the basics, the foundations of the patterns as well, uh, so that you will be able to understand this session. If you have any queries uh, while we are doing the webinar, uh, please feel free to keep uh, typing in, in the Q&A or the chat uh, box, and I will try and answer all the questions before the webinar ends. All right, so today's topic is, uh, like I mentioned, it's on technical analysis, it's about using the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence. So uh, to start off, uh, before we get into Fibonacci, let's just understand what technical analysis is and how does technical analysis uh, uh, play an important role in our decision making, whether be it uh, if you're doing a short term trade or if you're doing a long term investment as well. Uh, now, there are two, three different types of analysis an investor or a trader does before he takes any sort of uh, decision to uh, put his money in the market. And the first one is fundamental analysis. Uh, the other one is technical analysis. And a little more advanced would be quantitative analysis. But most basic uh, two analysis that everyone does is the fundamental and technical analysis. In short, what does fundamental analysis do? Uh, for example, let's say you want to buy uh, Tesla as a stock. Now, a fundamental analyst would uh, read about, about Tesla, read up about all their financials. They will go through their financials, which is publicly uh, disclosed uh, so that everyone has access to the financials of uh, Tesla because it's a public listed company. They go through their revenues, they check their progress year on year, quarter on quarter, and they see the growth Tesla uh, has currently uh, been as of today, and also the potential growth of next uh, quarter or even next couple of years. Now, the analysis that you do using the uh, financials of the company and uh, the product itself is your fundamental analysis. You do a fundamental analysis on uh, whether or Tesla is a good investment or a bad investment based on all the fundamentals that you see out there. Uh, when it comes to technical analysis, now technical analysis, uh, yes, fundamental is uh, important to understand uh, when, uh, when or if you should invest in a stock market or in a particular stock or a commodity. Uh, what technical analysis does is it gives you an insight of the price movement. So technical analysis is always based on the price of the particular stock. For example, let's say you have done an analysis on Apple, uh, the stock, and you find Apple to be an attractive company to be invested in. Now, there are different types of investors and traders. There are traders who trade on a daily basis. So uh, a person who's trading on Apple on a daily basis, a technical analysis would help him more than a fundamental analysis. Of course, fundamental analysis, he understands Apple is a good stock or a good investment after his analysis. But at what price should he be buying if you're doing a daily trade? Or let's say if you're trying to buy it for a little longer period of time, let's say you want to buy Apple for the next one to two years. But when would you buy Apple? Would you buy Apple uh, at the current market price or would you buy Apple when it gives you a drop? Or would you buy Apple when it is still going up? Now, technical analysis helps uh, clear out those queries that you might have in mind when to buy uh, Apple in terms of when you're looking at the pricing, because now you already understand fundamentally Apple is a good company. But if you want to do short term trades, technical analysis is of more importance than fundamental analysis. Now, I will show you a couple of examples of uh, why uh, someone would do technical analysis. Uh, especially when they're doing a short term uh, objective for their portfolio. Uh, we'll look at a couple of examples of the behavior pattern. Uh, one more example that I would give you for technical analysis is let's say there is a stock ABC. Now the stock uh, has been trading for let's say for the last five years. Now the stock uh, in this example is trading at $100. 
and then a uh, couple of months later you see the stock climb up to 110 uh, maybe a few weeks later you see the stock price come back to 100 again then you will wait uh, and watch out for the stock to go back up again probably a couple of months later the stock has gone back to 110 again now this is just an example uh, uh, of how the behavior of this particular stock is giving now after few more months you see the price of that stock again come back to 100 now the stock price has been trading between 100 and 110 now 100 and 110 are the technical levels so now after the price behavior and after studying the stock or watching the stock and monitoring the stock for a couple of months or years you understand every time this particular stock comes to 100 it eventually starts tends to go back up and every time it goes towards 110 it eventually starts dropping back down so what kind of a decision would you make uh, over here you would obviously try to buy it at 100 and take your profit at 110 now however the real life scenario is not going to be the same but i hope you get the idea of what a technical uh, analysis uh, is used in this uh, particular term the support is at 100 resistance is at 110 and these are the technical terms used for support and resistance moving forward before uh, i get into fibonacci there is a uh, average two range one of the technical tool that helps a lot when it comes to deciding how much of profit or how much of uh, loss one should take on an investment or a trading decision. Average true, uh, true range is very simple to understand. Basically, what it means is on an average, if you're looking at a time frame, let's say I'm looking at a particular stock on a daily time frame, uh, I want to know every day how much does, does this particular stock move, just to get an understanding. Irrespective of where the prices are, I just want to understand every day like let's say for example uh, you might be more familiar with crude or gold i want to understand every day how many dollars can gold move now one thing to keep in mind over here is average true range does not determine the direction of the move it only tells you based on previous daily movement how many dollars can gold move probably gold for example can move about five dollars every day so today gold has moved up five dollars tomorrow it can be down by five dollars day after tomorrow it can be down by another five dollars and probably three days later it can be up by another five dollars so if every day gold is moving about five dollars that becomes your average true range i will show you a couple of examples on average true range as well now if you have a platform already, uh, you can uh, log into the platform and find the average true range on your uh, demo platform. If you do not have one, you can always get in touch with us and uh, request for a demo and uh, you can put these tools and uh, look at how the tools work uh, on the demo. Uh, we are looking at uh, S&P 500. S&P 500 is the top 500 uh, companies of US, put it into one basket that is the uh, US uh, SPX 500. Now I'm looking at a monthly time frame. Okay, uh, for those of you who are very, very new, this particular time frame is very important because every time you do any analysis, you're looking at either a monthly time frame or you're looking at a weekly time frame, daily time frame, and uh, people also go up to, you know, a five minute time frame. They want to understand every five minutes, how much does SPX move? or every 30 minutes, how much does SPX move? In this case, in this example, I've just kept one month and for you to find uh, your uh, ATR, that is the average tooling, you can go down and click on technicals. Once you click on technicals, it will open up another window. Uh, at the bottom, you can go to studies and once you click on studies, you will be able to find ATR. In case you're not able to find, there is a search button option. Uh, where you can directly type ATR and it will find it for you. Now, once I click on ATR, the ATR opens up at the bottom. I think uh, my screen might be blocking the view. Let me just uh, make it smaller.
I think uh, this should probably show the screen clearly. I hope uh, everyone's able to still hear me and uh, see my screen. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to keep uh, typing in your questions in the chat or the Q&A box. All right, so now that you can see the ATR, it shows at this point of time, as of today, on a monthly time frame, SPX 500 moves about $340. So what it means is every candlestick that you see over here represents a monthly uh, move. I will uh, show how a candlestick also works when I'm showing you the demonstration uh, for those who are very new. But uh, for now, just keep in mind, we are looking at the monthly time frame and uh, we are looking at the current ATR, which is about $340. So what, what kind of insight is this giving me? Let's say, for example, I buy, uh, this month is almost coming to an end, but let's say by the end of this month or by uh, Jan beginning, I buy S&P 500. I know that S&P 500 can go against me by roughly $340 or it can go in my favor by $340. That is the average true range. Now, it is not necessarily it has to move $340 every single month. There are months where it might move just $100. There are months where it might even move $600. But on an average, the expectation is a move of $300. So now that is uh, the ATR. We will I will come back to ATR while I'm showing you how you can use ATR. Probably I will do a couple of demo trades on a shorter time frame. Uh, it will give you uh, much more clarity. Again, uh, just to sum up uh, ATR, it is most useful to identify how much of stop loss or take profit that one uh, would be willing to keep uh, once they have made a good analysis to enter into the stock or a commodity. Now, coming to Fibonacci. Now, Fibonacci is very fascinating, very interesting. I am sure that most of you all have already heard of Fibonacci or have read about Fibonacci or even studied Fibonacci in your school. Uh, but if you're very new to Fibonacci, do not worry. It is very, very simple to understand. And uh, it is also important for us to understand what is the basis of these Fibonacci and why is it important for us uh, to uh, use or to make use of Fibonacci as one of your tools to invest or take a decision in the market. Now, Fibonacci is nothing but a series of numbers. It starts with zero uh, and one, and you add your first number with your second number, you get your third number. In this case, you add zero plus one, you get one. You add one plus one, you get two. You add one plus two, you get three. You add two plus three, you get five. Five plus eight, 13. 13 plus 21, 34. So now you get the idea of how the Fibonacci series goes. And this series can go up to infinite. There is no limit to it. The whole series is based on adding your first number with your second number. As simple as that. There is nothing uh, really complicated in how Fibonacci series are formed. Now, why is Fibonacci that important? Now, let's say there's a fun fact also. So Fibonacci sequence, is known as the so I will tell you what a golden ratio uh, is and how you derive a golden ratio. Uh, most interestingly, it appears pretty much everywhere uh, that you look around. It appears in the nature, it appears in mathematical sequences, it uh, appears in algorithms. Uh, in fact, most algorithms by default are uh, also designed with the Fibonacci series and numbers uh, kept in uh, Fibonacci numbers keeping it uh, kept in mind. So it is pretty much seen everywhere uh, in uh, life, uh, in nature, uh, in uh, mathematics. Now, so much so you can hear a couple of examples. This is a geometrical representation of how a Fibonacci looks. Uh, this is very tiny. I hope you're able to see it. Uh, there is squares that is made and each square represents the Fibonacci number starting with one plus one you get two, then if you add two plus three, you get five, and you add five plus eight, you get 13, eight plus 13, 21, and then 13 plus 21, 34. And you can see 
all of these boxes pretty much cover the surrounding numbers, right? So each square is perfectly getting in line with uh, the Fibonacci series of numbers. Uh, if you connect all the corners of these boxes, you get a spiral. So this spiral pretty much you would see uh, again in a lot of uh, uh, natural things like a shell or a pine cone. In this case, you can see uh, these spirals appearing even in a sunflower seed. And uh, if you look at a particular tree, uh, the tree also is based on Fibonacci series of numbers. You can always uh, do a small experiment at home if you have plants at home, live plants, of course. Uh, you can always see on each stem how many leaves are there and on each branch how many uh, sub stems are there. Now, most likely, and I have not seen otherwise, but most of the time it always has a Fibonacci number. A particular stem could have five leaves or it could have 13 leaves or it could have eight leaves uh, and uh, the number of branches on a, a particular plant also will have the same Fibonacci series. This is a fun experiment that you can do at home right now. If you have a plant next to you, you can uh, take the plant out and check it out. And that is how the Fibonacci series has appeared pretty much everywhere in nature, like I mentioned earlier. <coughs> so much so, you can see the Fibonacci or uh, the Fibonacci ratios in our entire galaxy and universe as well. I hope you all can see the spiral in this particular image. To make it more clear, I will just share this image as well. So now you see the entire universe is pretty much uh, based on these Fibonacci numbers. Now, was this a coincidence or was it meant to be uh, this way? Now that is uh, debatable, but then uh, in terms of uh, the studies, there is a, a creator and the creator has designed things in a certain way and hence you see these similar patterns appearing everywhere. Now, some people even call this as the fingerprint of God. Now, talking about fingerprint, if you look at your own fingerprint, you can look at your thumb, you will see the similar spiral even with your fingerprint. Now, we all know the fact that not everybody's fingerprint uh, uh, is uh, the same. Each person, how many of, uh, uh, people have been here have their own unique fingerprint as well. So, but still yet contain the same Fibonacci series in it. So that is an interesting fact as well, which I thought I should mention. Now, coming to why is these numbers uh, important? We understand it appears everywhere in nature, everywhere in life. If that is so, does this same pattern appear even in our trading? Uh, since we are looking at technical analysis, does the same uh, patterns appear when you're looking at a particular price movement? We will get there shortly and I will show you a couple of examples. But before we get into uh, the charts, we need to understand the most important thing that is the golden ratio. Now, golden ratio basically is 61.8. Uh, uh, I will tell you how the golden ratio is uh, derived. If you all have your mobiles with you or a calculator next to you, keep it ready. Uh, we'll do one or two exercises to understand how the golden ratio is calculated. It's very simple. Now, if you look at the markets, if you're reading the news today or if you're reading about any uh, returns, any profits, everyone measures things in percentages, right? If you look at the news today, you will probably see the market is up by a certain percentage or the market is down by a certain percentage. If you look at uh, the entire year, you would see the market is down by a certain uh, percentage or the market is up by a, a certain percentage. So your PNL is always on percentage. So using the Fibonacci series numbers as itself would not make sense or uh, in the financial markets. So we need to uh, find the percentage and the percentage over here is the golden ratio 61.8. Uh, how do we find 61.8? Basically you go back to your series of numbers. Let me just put that slide. If you take any of the number from the series, for example, let's say I take 34 and I divide that by 55 multiplied by 100, I should get 61.8. Uh, you can do this exercise with me and um, please put in your answers in the chat. 
let's do let's do another uh, number let's take a bigger number this time let's take 10946 and divide that with 17711 you take your first number that is 10946 divide that by 17711 multiply that by 100 and you can share your answers on the chat i'll just give you a minute you can use your mobile phone calculators as well perfect so you are like getting 61.8 now you do the same thing with any series on the number you will get 61.8 and hence it is known as the golden ratio if you take 144 divided by 233 you should get 61.8 if you take 2584 divided that by 4181 into 6 uh, into 100 you should get 61.8 now and that is how 61.8 is the golden ratio and you can always uh, do the bigger numbers as well uh, when you have time try and do it on all the series of numbers you will be getting 61.8 now that we understand that 61.8 percentage is a, a very crucial number or crucial percentage now we can use this and implement this in our trading charts now here is an example of apple uh and i will explain to you how a fibonacci uh chart or the tool could be used to you know measure this percentage now before i get into <coughs> this i will give you one more uh, illustration uh, where it will help you understand uh, how to measure a particular uh, chart so a fibonacci now we are looking at percentages we understand fibonacci a golden ratio at 61.8 now if i measure my height okay from my head to my toe that is 100% my height let's say is 100% and then i need to understand where my 61.8% comes in my entire height now that particular 61.8 would be a crucial point for my body i'll give you another example which again if you all have measuring tapes i am sure you won't have it right now you can measure your arm from your shoulder bone till your fingertips when you measure your arm let's say you get a certain uh, centimeter long let's say that is 100% and then if you do 61.8 if you try and see where 61.8% age of your entire length of your arm comes it comes at your elbow now these are just few illustration purpose that i'm giving you and now we do understand that our elbow plays a crucial role for our hand because it uses as a pivot to lift something now since i've given you this and since i've given you this uh, uh, example of our height let's take a particular chart now in this case we are looking at apple and we are looking at a one month time frame i see apple has rallied all the way from these levels one straight upside so now this is a straight uh, uptrend that you see over here before it turned back down towards a downtrend now what happens over here is this gives me my height so now i can every time a market goes up and then it reverses you measure how much it has gone up in this case let's say it went up this entire move is about 100% and then when it drops back down it takes a break over here before it continues its uptrend again and where exactly did this take a break it came back down almost 61.8% uh, of this entire 100% move and then it bounces back up now i know this might be very simple but it is not always the case let's look at another example over here this is apple again i'm looking at a time frame now in 2016 i see the market earlier before that it was flat and we see a momentum that has taken place once you identify a momentum you still cannot use the fibonacci and until and unless there is a change in trend so you wait till the change in trend happens and once the change in trend happens you measure the entire move the uptrend 
how do you measure you once you select your uh, fibonacci tool from your draw tools you can click at the bottom of the uh, beginning of the trend and ending of the trend and it will automatically draw this for you in this case when it dropped back down it took a break around this level and again continued its rally in 2019 right what happened over here if you go back if this was a 100% move it came back to again 61.8 and bounced back up again we'll do a couple of live examples also to see if 61.8 is working similarly as what it is working on apple the reason i've chosen apple is because apple is one of uh, the biggest stocks that everyone uh, likes to hold or invest into and apple is a big good uh, stock to invest as well now coming to 2000 sorry coming to 2020 same apple we see apple came down over here in 2019 it began a new rally before it changed a trend again and once it changed the trend that is when i measure my fibonacci again in this case it came back down again back to 61.8 and the rally continued i will show you where it is as of today as well now i hope uh, most of you would have understood so far if you have any questions i'll just take a 30 second break uh, till you all if you all have any questions before i move on to harmonic pattern All right, I am, I'm guessing everyone's uh, understood how Fibonacci works. Do not worry, I will show you how uh, you have to draw the Fibonacci on a live chart as well. Now, harmonic patterns, we will not get into uh, too much of harmonic patterns as of today. Uh, it will be a little more advanced, but I will just show you how a harmonic pattern is uh, made or how a harmonic pattern appears using Fibonacci. Now, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is we understood 61.8 is a Fibonacci ratio, but there is also 23.6, there's 38.2, there is 88.6. What are these numbers? These are also ratios derived from the Fibonacci numbers. So for 61.8, we divided our first number with the second number. But if you divide your first number with your third number, you get... 38.2 if you uh, divide your first number with your fourth or uh, this one you get 23.6 so and that is how your Fibonacci ratios or the percentages have been calculated and these are all crucial uh, percentages that every uh, technical analyst would look at 61.8 is an example that we are choosing for this particular uh, uh, session but there are people who take decision even on 23.6 38.2 50%, 61.8, 50% by the way is not a Fibonacci uh, percentage, it's just uh, put in place to uh, see the upside and the downside, so the mid range is the 50%. Now, using those Fibonacci ratios, uh, Mark basically, uh, sorry, Scott uh, Carney identified these Fibonacci uh, ratios create a certain pattern as long as all of these price movement go on each of these ratios. I will show you an example of uh, how it works. So what does Fibonacci uh, harmonic pattern help us to identify what and when to buy or sell to invest or to come out of the investment. Now, this helps a technical analyst to analyze when to enter, when to exit, and in some cases, when not to even enter. So all these analysis is not just for taking investments. It will also help you to avoid certain investments if it is not at a, a good level to buy. Let's look at a couple of examples. Now, there is a Gartley pattern, the person who identified uh, these patterns. Uh, in this case, the black line represents the price movement and the blue lines is just a connecting uh, lines so you can ignore the blue lines but you can look at uh, the black lines so in this particular uh, move it has taken an uptrend okay from point x to point a 
and then it drops down to point B. Now, when uh, remember, like I said, you can always you can only measure a trend when the trend has come to an end, and you will identify the trend has come to an end once it starts dropping steeply. So, in this case, if you measure X to A, the B should ideally stop at 61.8 before it continues its upward swing. Now, there is another interesting way to also measure. We've always been measuring bottom to top. You can also measure top to bottom to identify how much high can this particular price go after the downtrend. Similarly, after a downtrend is ended and the uptrend has begun, you can measure A to B and it will show you where 61.8 or in this case 88.6 uh, would come. So if all of these levels match, like let's say at B it came to 61.8, from there it reversed, it went to 88.6, from there again it reversed and it came back to 161.8 or 127.2. In this case, the pattern has been completed and if all of these percentages align, one could expect the prices from here to shoot up uh, drastically and hence the pattern needs to be exactly on the Fibonacci series. So how people or a technical analyst would trade this would be, he will take a buy at the D point. Of course, your D point is determined even before it happens because of the Fibonacci series. And people can place a buy order. They keep a stop loss below X. Okay, that means if it goes below X, the pattern has failed. If it reverses from here, you can expect the prices to go back up by 61.8 or even 161.8. That is if it goes beyond 100%. And vice versa, if you are short selling in the market. Uh, I think uh, my audio, audio is not working. Just give me a moment. I uh, can, you all, uh, can the rest of you all hear me? Do you all have any uh, issues with the audio? Okay, I think uh, for most of you all, the audio is fine. I'm guessing uh, for the ones where the line is breaking, probably might be the internet connection. Uh, if you can probably switch on your mobile data or if you can go closer to your Wi-Fi router, probably the audio issue should not be there. All right. Uh, so I'm guessing uh, now you all have understood how uh, the harmonic pattern works. Of course, uh, we have uh, people who will identify these patterns whenever it appears and inform you uh, so that then you can take a decision if you want to invest or do not want to invest. So we have a team that will support you with understanding more in depth of technical analysis. Uh, if you have an account with us, you will find uh, you will have, you'll be assigned a, a relationship manager who will uh, teach you all this. If you want to do it on your own or if you're busy and you want to be notified every time a pattern is formed, uh, you have your relationship manager who will notify you every time there is a pattern that has been formed in the market. So do not worry if you're not getting the entire uh, subject in one go. Uh, once you have your relationship manager, uh, he will uh, sit with you. He will go through all of these patterns again. And of course, uh, you can cover more uh, topics under um, the technical analysis. Now, there are a few more other patterns also that form. The only differences are earlier we saw it going up, coming down to 61.8. But in this case, if it comes down to just 50% or 38.2 and then bounces back up and then goes back to 88.6 and drops back to 261.8, it forms a new pattern. This is known as a bullish bat pattern. So the names basically just differ based on what the percentages are. You have bullish crab. Bullish crab has an extra extension. And if these pattern, I mean, if these uh, ratios uh, trigger, that is when you will find a bullish crab. And in this case, people again buy at the D point and keep a target on the higher end. This is a bullish butterfly. Now, I hope uh, the harmonic patterns is understood. 
what we'll do right now is let's go to the live chart and see how we can implement the first uh, one, the ATR. And uh, second is how are we going to use the Fibonacci tool uh, to measure a rally or a drop in the market. <coughs> also, different time frames, how the ATR shows how many dollars a particular instrument can move. Let me just share my screen. All right, perfect. So uh, here, this is the platform. If you all are very new to the platform, uh, very easy to understand, very user friendly. Uh, I'm just going to the search button over here and I'm going to select Apple since we were looking at Apple as our examples. So now you can see Apple all the way from 2009, actually even way before that, you can see Apple from 2006, 2007. You see Apple rallies, it gives a drop, it rallies up, drops, rallies up, drops, rally, drop, rally, drop. Now, keep in mind the example that I gave you about my height. So every time I'm going to measure my height, I'm going to see where the 61.8 of my entire 100% body comes to. And by the way, the answer to that is your hip. Your hip comes at 61.8% of uh, your entire 100% of your height. Now again, your hip is very crucial, uh, which holds your upper body and your lower body. So similarly to the example that I gave you about the arm, your elbow is very crucial because your arm is designed to lift weights and your uh, arm cannot be exactly made 50-50%, hence the 61.8. So now you get the idea of why 61.8 plays a crucial role pretty much in everything that we see around. Now let's see if the same is uh, applicable on the charts. Let me just, uh, I hope you are able to see my chart. I'll just make it a little bigger. Okay, in this case, uh, for those of you who are very new to the market, uh, I'll just explain to you how a candlestick works. I think that is uh, very important to understand. Now, since I'm looking at a monthly time frame, each candle represents a month. This represents over here, December of 2021. This res, uh, represents this month, which is December 2023, to, uh, sorry, 2022. Uh, the month hasn't ended. So the candle could either close um, much more lower or the candle can also close higher. So a candle, a new candle only begins after the month ends because we are looking at the monthly time frame. Now, what is the body of the candle? What does it signify? So the body of the candle, let's take a look at this green candle here. This body represents the open price and the close price. So always keep in mind the body, the solid part always represents the open price and the close price. In this example, the market opened at 136 for July and it went up all the way to 162 by the end of July and it closed when the next candle opens when the when we go to the next month because the price opened lower and closed higher it becomes a green candle okay now let's look at what happened the very next month the very next month the price is opened it went high and the tails always represents the high and the lows it went as high, it opened at 160, it went up as high as 175. But before the month ended, it came back down. It came back to its open price. It went lower than its open price and closed lower. And this, it closed at 157. It opened at 160, closed at 157. But during the month, it had also gone up as high as 175. So because it closed lower than the open price, it becomes a red candle. It's as simple as that. Let's look at this particular candle, which has a tail on both the end. In this case, it opened at this price. It could have gone up first or it could have gone down first, but it 
has made as a high as uh, 166 and it made a low at 132 but the price had opened at 156 and closed at 149 so now the body represents the open and close since the price closed below the open it's a red candle and during the course of time it also had made a high and a low so each candle represents open high sorry open close high and low I hope you all understood this. Just to put uh, things more into perspective, I'm just going to open a 30 second chart. Now, on a 30 second, each candle represents every 30 seconds. <coughs> now, the time is 7.44. Uh, we have passed 10 seconds. The prices are going down uh, since the price is lower than the open price. It's a red candle. Now it's 21 seconds, it's going back up, you can see the tail which is the low, now 30 seconds and it went on to the next candle and this is how candlesticks are formed, alright. So now let's get back to a monthly time frame and the candlestick pattern. For me to measure uh, a rally, keep in mind you always measure a rally only once it changes its uh, direction let's look at in this case market went up and there was a downtrend so that is when i will measure this up rally previously it went up from here till here and then you saw the downtrend that is when i will measure my lowest point to the highest point you always measure the lowest point to the highest point after a rally has begun in this case it picked up over here, it went up and then you saw the big drop. Similarly, previously you see there was a good rally, then you saw the drop. So whenever you are trying to uh, use Fibonacci, always first identify a good trend and then you wait until the trend has reversed. Now let's see what is. So in our examples earlier, we saw uh, 2017, 2019, uh, 2020. Now, where are we at? We are, the price is trading at 134. I can see a rally that had begun all the way from here. And it stopped because there was two months negative where the markets actually dropped. And then a new rally began. And then you see the market drop. But I would not consider this as a very good uh, uptrend because it did not last for long. Uh, it, in fact, a good rally has begun somewhere around these levels here. Okay, and it has ended at these levels over here. Now, for my example, I will measure because the trend has changed. Let me just uh, draw the trend as well. So the trend was an uptrend over here, the rally. Okay, now once the market came below this, now this is where I understood this uptrend uh, has stopped and now a downtrend has begun. Now what I will do is I go to my draw tools, I go to my Fibonacci, click on Fibonacci, I will choose the lowest point before the rally began and the highest point where the rally stopped. Now, if you can see, let me make the fonts bigger. Yeah. So now, as you can see, <clears throat> the market, uh, this was November 2020. The market rallied. There was a consolidation here, but it continued rallying before we saw the big drop come in. Now the drop has come in and you see these markets again bouncing back from these levels here. Yeah, you can see it has actually bounced back up a couple of times. If you can, if you remember the example that I gave you initially that uh, for stock ABC, of course, that was a made up stock where it was trading between 100 and 110. Now, if you see every time Apple is coming down to 135 over here, it tends to go back up. So it has come down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. It has come down to 135. It has always gone back up. 
Now, this is where technical analysis helps investor to decide whether they should buy at 135 or whether they should not buy at 135. Your first indication, uh, your first uh, confirmation is the price action without the Fibonacci. You see, if you just look at it normally, you see the price is just bouncing back from these levels. Okay, every time you see a price bounce back from a specific price multiple times. Uh, for technical analysts, it has to be minimum three times. Then the fourth time you could expect the prices, you could buy and expect the, expect the prices to go back up. Fifth time, it becomes a little more stronger. Sixth time, it becomes a little more stronger. So anyone who's been buying at these levels will also understand after seeing three, four times, the prices goes to from 134, it goes somewhere close to 157. And then again, you see a drop. It had breached 157 as well, but majority of the times you see the price is always going to 157 before it dropped back down. So a technical analyst would buy it at 134 and take their profit at 157. So that is a percentage return wise, it would be about 15%. So every time they saw a 15% return, they exit. Now, of course, this is just using basic uh, support and resistance. Now, if you then identify this and combine that with your Fibonacci, your lowest point to the highest point, you see 61.8 also comes at 135. Now, this is your second confirmation. So at 135, sorry, it's not exactly 135, it's around 135.5 or 135.9. Around these levels, you see the market consistently bouncing back up. Now you have your first confirmation in terms of support. You have your second confirmation in terms of your Fibonacci ratio. Now let's add uh, the ATR that I was telling you about. Now without the ATR, we were buying, let's say in this example, uh, investor or a trader finds 135 as a good level to buy but has no idea how much of take profit he should keep. In this case, visually, yes, uh, you see resistance at this price over here. But let's say at you did not have a perfect resistance. In this case, it, uh, it had broken up once, it tried breaking up second time, third time it held, fourth time it held. But if you're confused, if you're not sure whether it can go till 175 again, or whether it will go only till 155. This way your ATR comes into play. Now ATR you will find in technicals, you go to studies and you click on ATR. Now let's say what, uh, let's see what ATR is telling me. So according to my monthly time frame, the ATR is telling me it moves about $20. So you can see the ATR here. Let me just pull this more closer to the graph here. So you can see the current ATR is 20.50. So if someone had to buy at 135 and does not know how much profit should be taken, your ATR is telling you it can go up by $20. Sorry, ATR is showing it can move by $20. Again, ATR, please uh, keep in mind, does not give you the direction. It only tells you how many dollars it can move. So anyone who bought at 135 can expect to keep a profit of $20 on that. So that is around 155. So now you see if you use technical analysis um, and use all the tools before you take any investment or trading decision, always make sure that you are familiar with the tools that you're using. Uh, make sure you're familiar you practice a lot before you actually take a decision on that. And very importantly, do not depend on one single indicator. Uh, it is always better to get two to three confirmations before you take any uh, decision in terms of investment or trading. Now, in this case, let's take an example of someone who would buy Apple. So now I understand as of today, the price of Apple is 136, which again looks fair uh, to enter. Let's say if you have to buy, 
uh, 100 shares of Apple. Your investment value is about $13,500. Now we understand that Apple can go to 155 based on two things. One is you saw resistance because of the price movement. Second, your ATR is showing $20. So to be fair, you keep a $20 take profit. If you want to be a little more cautious, not very over optimistic, you can always keep a stop loss, uh, sorry, or take profit of even $18 uh, than $20. So in case, you know, it does not go up by $20 and goes up only $18 and drops, at least you take the profit. Now, the most crucial and the most important thing of everything, even more than a take profit, is your risk management. So Fibonacci ratio 61.8, support resistance, ATR, all these tools, yes, gives you uh, indication as to where you could be hoping to buy. But it is not 100% guaranteed that the prices has to jump back up from 61.8. It can always come to maybe uh, come a little lower than 61.8 and go back up. Or it can completely go uh, down, it can go down below the 100% move and it can continue going back down if things in the market changes. So hence your risk management is the most important thing. So in this case, I would keep a 1 is to 1 risk reward. So if I'm willing to make $20, take, uh, $20 profit, I'll be also willing to take a risk of $20. But if you want to improve your uh, risk reward you do want you do not want to have equal profit and equal risk you want to keep your risk lower and your profitability higher you can always use your fibonacci again to see where you can keep your stop losses but in terms of the atr i understand uh, apple can move 20 dollars and hence i am going to keep a 20 dollar stop loss but there is one more thing that you can always also check is from the time this particular candle opened let me just close these two if you remember uh what i said about the candlestick body the body it opened at 148 and currently it is trading at 136 so in this case the movement of 20 dollars It's moved on roughly around $12. It had actually gone down a little lower, about $15 from the time it opened. Now, in this case, since the move of $15 has already happened, you can always keep a stop loss of additional $5 lower. Yep. You keep a stop loss of additional $5 lower. And of course, your take profit of $20 back up. Now, this way, your risk reward, you're risking about $500. And you are keeping a profit of $2,000. So in this case, even if two or three trades goes and hits your stop loss, uh, it is okay because your profitability is much more higher than uh, the losses that you're taking on each trade. Now, in the case where you do not uh, understand or you do not know uh, how many dollars of stop loss you can keep, again, Fibnaki helps you solve that uh, query as well. So, this was my rally. Right now, it is trading at 61.8. Okay. Now, the second level after 61.8 is 78.6. Uh, you can add or remove as well. All these ratios are customizable. Uh, people who trade only on 61.8 uh, prefer to keep only 61.8. Uh, people who trade on all the levels prefer to keep 23.6, 38.2. Uh, now, in this case, I'm going to remove 23.6, 38.2. I'm going to keep 61.8, which is the entry point. 78.6 and 88.6, which would be either my second entry point or my stop loss i'm just going to confirm okay let me zoom this in i'm going to close the atr for now so there's more screen yeah 
Now we understand we are going to be entering at 61.8. Where do I keep my stop loss? At 78.6. So in this case, I am keeping a stop loss at 78.6 and I am keeping a take profit of $20 based on ATR. Now let's say I want to keep my take profit based on uh, Fibonacci. I can always add my 38.6 back or 23.6 .23 and I can keep my take profit at 23.6 on the higher end or even 38.6. So it depends on the strategy and the instrument that you're looking at. But uh, the point that I'm trying to make over here is any decision that you make on technical analysis or you use a specific technical analytical tool to take a decision, make sure your risk management and your take profit, uh, everything is also set based on similar parameters. Otherwise, there would not be any consistency in all the trades. Each trade would pretty much have its own logic. Uh, your entry has a different logic. Exit will have a different logic. And uh, that is not an advisable thing to be doing uh, because you need to have, if you need to see consistent results and if you have, want to have uh, consistent progress and success in uh, technical analysis, you need to keep the discipline uh, that comes along with it as well. Majority who follow uh, technical analysis uh, uh, the successful uh, technical analysts always follow the discipline of keeping their stop losses and take profit. Now, a uh, lot of short term traders lose a lot of money. Uh, reason being either it is driven by emotions after the trade is taken. Uh, in this case, the trade was taken at uh, 61.8, which was a good entry. But uh, of, let's say from uh, that is at 135. Now the price came to 136. Uh, probably that particular trader might close the trade. Although the technical tools are telling it can either go up at $20 or in terms of Fibonacci, it can go up till 164 Due to lack of patience, they might end up missing on this additional profit. And since the decision is being made spontaneously and emotionally, uh, there would not be any consistency. Now, one more way I can also do is I can measure top to bottom, right? This is my top. This is the highest point. At this point in time, the reversal in trend has not yet taken place completely, but there has been no year short term. But I can see 61.8 on the upside. I can keep my take profit there as well. Here you see you're risking about $1,400 to make a profit of $2,400. Again, your risk reward increases uh, drastically. So I hope using fibonacci uh, now is more familiar more easier to understand let me try and do another example is there any other uh, chart or is there any other instrument that you would want me to uh, put fibonacci uh, on and show you how a decision could be made probably i will do it on a five minute or 30 minute time frame so that it will give you uh, a good example of what is happening in real time any specific instrument that you all have in mind, uh, you can put it on the uh, chat. So in the meanwhile, till you all do that, I will just open NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the top uh, 100 stocks, tech stocks of US. Now we see, I'm looking at a 30 minute time frame. So let's look at what is currently happening. There is a huge rally that is taking place which is a good thing so now we and i understand right now the trend is up but will i buy uh, nasdaq right now i wouldn't i will wait for the big drop remember i said every time you measure a fibonacci only once the drop comes in so in this case now if i measure fibonacci from the lowest point the current highest point is here Probably it could go higher. I am not sure yet. So I would always wait for a reversal in trend. And let's say, for example, say this has reversed. It comes back to 61.8. This is where I would consider taking a buy position. This is where I would consider keeping my stop loss. 
and of course 28.6 which is not there on the screen right now but here will be my take profit so it becomes as clear as that as long as we are following all the rules of uh, the ratios in terms of your keeping your stop losses entering on the right level keeping your stop loss on the right level and keeping your take profit on the right level Let's look at a couple of uh, previous rallies that has happened. Okay, here looks like a good rally that picked up. I'm just going to change my candlestick pattern. Do not worry about it. So I see market picked up, went slightly flat and there was a huge rally here. Now let's look at the lowest point to the highest point. So this is my lowest point. This is my highest point. In this case, Entry was at 61.8, stop loss was 78.6. My stop loss unfortunately got triggered, but that is fine. Your stop loss triggering should not be a big issue because your stop loss protects your losses from increasing beyond what you were expecting to take. Let's look at a few other rallies. Okay, we see another rally here. So this was my lowest point, it went up. It went sideways and then there was a sharp drop. This drop came back to 61.8. Bigger. You see it came back to 61.8. Just make it white. Yeah, so more easier to see. So in this case, it came back to 61.8 and immediately jumped back up. So if you have to take a buy here, keep your stop loss here. Of course, take profit at 23.6. I will add 23.6 back. Done. So you bought here. You put your stop loss at 78.6. And you put a take profit at... 23.6 so in this case it went give you maximum profit it dropped back down again you can again re-enter with the same stop loss but in this case it broke below so this time your stop loss would have triggered so i hope this was interesting and i hope uh, you will got to learn something new uh, something more today us 30 okay someone's written us 30 I would not recommend US 30 uh, uh, to trade because it moves quite volatile. But then if you're sticking to your risk management, you're not taking too much leverage and sticking to all the rules of uh, technical analysis and especially with the risk management, uh, it's still fine. Let's look at US 30. Let's make it interesting. Let's look at what's happening on five minutes. On a five minute chart, I'm going to change my candlestick. I can actually, okay, so there was a rally, drop rally. So let's check the previous rally, lowest point to my highest point. So preferably, let's say from the green candle. It went up, it came back down to 61.8. Let me. It came back to 61.8, you would have bought here. Stop loss and take profit. Yeah, so that is what has happened. Uh, this is at, on 21st, basically today, around 4.35. Currently, it is still rallying, so this is my lowest point. My highest point is not yet formed. It will form only once I see the market dropping back down. So let's say, for example, it, this is the highest point. It starts dropping back down. My entry will be again at 61.8. Stop loss at 78.6. Take profit at 23.6. So pretty much Fibonacci helps you make your decisions more easily. The only Thing that you all have to consider when you're using Fibonacci or when you're taking a trade, make sure you're not uh, over leveraged. Even if you're leveraged, make sure your stop loss is in place and your stop loss is as per your risk appetite. If you have $10,000 in your account, 
uh, let's uh, just do one last demonstration before we close let's say i have ten thousand dollars in my account i'm going to be buying uh us 30 in this case at uh 33,000, which is at 68.61.8. Let's say if I buy one unit, I keep my stop loss at 78.6 and I keep my take profit at 23.6. I'm just going to remove my Fibonacci from here so you can see the trade. This is my entry price, my take profit, stop loss based on Fibonacci. If I buy one unit, I'm risking $53 to make $100. So that is one is two, two risk reward. So every trade, every trade that I take, I will make sure I maintain this. Is losing $53 on a $10,000 account a conservative approach? Yes. If you want to be more conservative, you do not want to lose $53 on a single trade. You can always reduce your number of units. Right? Now you're risking only $26 to make $50 profit. Now, if you are the uh, person who has a bigger risk appetite, you can always do two units. Now you'll be risking about $100 to make $230. Now, if you notice one thing, I have not changed any of my levels. My entry price is still based on the Fibonacci level. My exits on both profit and loss is still based on Fibonacci levels. I am not tampering with the signals or the entry levels. I am only making my adjustment in how much of exposure should I take. Now, let's say you are consistently doing $100 stop loss and $200 take profit. Now, if the $100 is your risk appetite, you always maintain your $100 risk appetite. Unless you want to increase it later, you can do it gradually. Like let's say now I have booked about 10 profits, uh, 10 times profits of $200. So I am up by $2,000. Now I don't mind increasing my risk. So from next trade onwards, probably I will do four units. Now I'll be risking $200 to make $400. Where inconsistency comes is, let's say I do a trade with one unit. I made $100 profit. Okay, my next trade, I do five units directly. But in this case, let's say it didn't go in my favor. It went against me. I will lose $265. Now, $265 is 2.65% of your $10,000 capital. So always make sure uh, you uh, stick to your risk appetite. Always make sure your risk management is in place no matter what. Uh, wait for two to three confirmations. Uh, at the same time, uh, read about the markets. Understand what is also happening in the market. Sometimes uh, there might be major news that could be upcoming, which can impact the market. So hence, uh, stop loss would be very, very crucial. Um, and of course, your take profit. Avoid trying to book profits earlier and definitely never remove a stop loss once you have decided you are ready to take this $265 risk. You stick to $265 risk. Uh, if you keep increasing your stop loss, or if you remove your stop loss and market turns, let's say, I'm just going to change my time frame. Let's say I remove my stop loss and the market dropped back to 20th, that is yesterday's low. And I do not have a stop loss. Now I'll be losing $3,500. All right. Why? Only because I did not keep the stop loss based on the initial logic I had taken the trade for. So I hope uh, this session was interesting. I hope you all got to learn uh, uh, something new today. Uh, please give me your feedback. Uh, if you like the session, if you want me to cover any other topics, please uh, feel free to write in the chat section. Uh, I hope to uh, see you all soon uh, in the next couple of webinars we'll be having next year. Uh, since this is our last webinar for this year, wishing all of you uh, advanced, very happy new year and Merry Christmas. Um, if you all have any further queries and if you want any one-on-one -on -one, uh, session, uh, please get in touch with your relationship managers and they will be able to guide you going forward from there. Uh, hope you all have a good session. Have a good week. Uh, uh, have a good day. Good evening. Thank you.